In January of 2004, EA Sports Big decided to add on to the street legacy. After a successful NBA Street 1 and 2, they decided to go from the court to the field. And BAM! NFL Street was born. It was a great staple that showed that arcade-style football games could still work and have a lasting effect on consoles, which is something that the current landscape would have you not believe. And seeing just how many people liked NFL Street, EA decided to get back into the lab and make a sequel. And here we are. The most important thing that stands out is the fact that the game came out in the same calendar year as the original NFL Street. This is because when the sequel was announced, it was scheduled for early January, but they decided to drop it a couple of days before Christmas. Gee, I wonder why. This is different from the NBA Street rollouts that were almost two years apart from each other. So today, we're going to look at NFL Street 2 and why when you go back to a lot of reviews that people wrote, people felt a little underwhelmed at first. So we're going to talk about how this game held up over time. So is NFL Street 2 that different from regular NFL Street? Well honestly, if you put Street 1 and Street 2 together, you might not notice a difference right away. The core Street gameplay was simple, fast paced, and fun, and the changes aren't eye grabbing until you take a closer look. The main addition to the gameplay that I love is the fact that you can use the wall to pass, juke, tackle, and dive now. If you thought making open field tackles was hard in 1, well, this shit was OD in 2. But it was an amazing game mechanic that I still love to this day. There were also hotspots that you could use these moves on to help fill up the bigger and better Game Breaker meter, which was something that we like to call Game Breaker 2. You had the choice to use a Game Breaker or save up for the more powerful Game Breaker 2, which went to a cutscene and served as an automatic turnover or open field score, honestly. And this game did a good job of juggling trying to get style points and getting a Game Breaker with actually winning the game. The better your opponent was, the more important Game Breaker management was. And when you really think about it, the game was actually kind of balanced. Yeah, you couldn't lock down people on defense easily, but the amount of batted balls, tips, and fumbles made the gameplay seem like defense could actually make a huge difference. Other small but worthwhile game mechanics included being able to see audibles and changing the one to two point conversions to how far out the ball is from the goal line instead of a run is one point and a pass is two, like in the original NFL Street. Now what NFL Street 2 did was try to break the monotony from beyond a gameplay standpoint. There is an expansion of game modes and I think it was a very welcome change. First I want to talk about Own the City. Own the City is where you start off as a player that's not good and you have to find a team to play Exhibit. So I hear you looking to play a little ball. I tell you what, I'll show you where to find action in this city. Good looking, that's why I messes with Exhibit. I messes with Exhibit. If you can get by this big fella over here, yeah, that's right. A little straight up one on one. Man, that's why, why don't I don't you exit out of my face, I exhibition? Do not mess with Exhibit. So basically, you have to play pickup game and do all these other things to gain players by winning challenges. Think of it as if Nick Fury needed a football team. And over the course of the game, you'd be able to find and replace other players on your team. So by the time you get to the end and face off with that hip hop meme guy, you would have a real squad. Now the one drawback in this mode is that you could beef up your own player's attributes, but you couldn't beef up the other players on your team at the time. I understand why they did it, because the whole progression thing wouldn't have made sense, but still. It would have been cool to have them add skill boosts on like a game by game basis or something, but that's just a minor nitpick. Now, NFL Challenge allows you to build a team in 150 days that will be able to rival NFL Legends with a series of challenges and stuff, hence NFL Challenge. The key here is that you have time, but you don't have to complete every challenge. You can also choose how to disperse the attribute points between your whole team and not just one character like in Own the City. I recommend playing Own the City first because you'll be able to export your Own the City player into your NFL Challenge, which gives you a head start. You could also import them into Madden, and honestly that was a tactic I never fully understood how to do as a kid. 
Now reading the old reviews for this game, the vibe is that the story modes were drawn out and got monotonous after a while, and I understand where they're coming from. However, I will counter that it was kind of necessary for a game like this. The reward for playing a career mode like this and seeing how dominant and awesome your creative player could get, it felt worthwhile the end, seeing an absolute beast on the field. And yeah, all those challenges and stuff, they get tedious over time, but I'm glad they made that option available for the people that wanted to have as much fun with the game as possible, and wanted their player to become as much of a legend and unstoppable force as this game allows. And of course, the boring gameplay loop danger occurs in every sports game. Nowadays, we have people playing the same 2K Park mode every day for a whole year just to get the next game and do the same exact thing over and over and over again. In addition to the career modes, I also love the mini games. 500, Crush the Carrier, 4 vs 4. These are games that I actually played as a kid because I didn't live in a neighborhood that had a lot of kids to be able to assemble 7-on-7 seven seven games. It was a great way of repurposing the gameplay into more diverse and fun formats. Now even though NFL Street and NFL Street 2 were released in the same year, NFL Street 2 makes the first NFL Street seem like EA Sports was playing it safe with its debut. The overall lack of modes and wacky gameplay in the first one honestly makes it seem like they were hesitant on how many people would even like this game, and that's honestly fair. However, thanks to the wide variety of things to do in NFL Street 2, I have no desire to play the original NFL Street. Now let's talk about the random miscellaneous stuff that I like and don't like. I really do think that they did a great job making the playbooks extensive and dynamic. They really could have phoned something in like this, but they gave us multiple formations, passing concepts, they even had multiple option plays and packages, which is great considering that NCAA Football 2004 and 2005 were also focusing on that option. <laughs> Get, I said option, options to have options. Anyway, I'm stupid. Continuing. I also love how they only have like 10 cutscene sayings, so they keep saying the same thing over and over again, no matter who is saying them. Man, they're not that good. You're not that good. <laughs> I love the soundtrack for NFL Street 2 more than NFL Street 1, and of course, the NFL Street 2 intro is amazing. Now these last nitpicks are a little unreasonable, but here goes. Now I know this is a foreign thing to EA football games until later in the row, but I wish that the analog stick was used for more than just a signature style adjustment. I wish that if Street 2 was able to put jukes in there too with the right analog stick, that would have been awesome. However, I understand that this game was made in 2004, so I'm asking, I'm asking for a lot here. The only big drawback was the lack of an expanded roster. For some teams, you couldn't use your favorite player because they only used a handful of players from each team. And I get that they don't want to put everybody in the National Football League into a street video game because that probably just will take a whole lot of time. But I still want to play as Larry Fitzgerald or Antonio Gates. But that's honestly all I have to say about NFL Street 2. But what do you think? Do you like this game? Do you remember this game? What do you hate about this game? Of course, feel free to let me know in the comments below and I'll get to them. And of course, subscribe if you're new and keep watching my videos if you're old. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!